Hey everyone, how's it going? So today I want to talk to you about driving a Tesla in cold weather. So recently my family and I took a trip to the United States and we hired a Tesla Model X via Turo, the car sharing app. And we drove it from Denver Airport in Colorado to a place called Keystone, which is about an hour and a half's drive west of Denver. And when I say cold weather, I'm not joking, I mean like minus 20 degrees. I certainly learned some lessons along the way and I'd like to share them with you in case you are thinking about driving a Tesla in cold weather. So like any road trip, my first tip is to plan your trip. Whether you're driving electric or internal combustion engine, it's always good to plan your trip. So like a good, good driver, I planned our, our trip on Google Maps first of all to see what the distance was and check the range of the Tesla and in nice weather in nice 20 degree Celsius weather it would have been fine but I didn't take into account the fact that it was going to be minus 20 degrees I didn't realize it was going to be that cold uh, I mean I realized it was going to be cold but not that cold and I also um, mistakenly forgot to take into account the fact that we'd be climbing as well so we'll be driving uphill up to that resort so with a range of 350 kilometers on a tesla model x 75d i was thinking that's fine no issues but with the temperature dropping to minus 20 um, the efficiency of that car dropped dramatically i would say from an efficiency normally of 250 to 300 watt hours per kilometer on in nice weather it really increased to about 600 watt hours per kilometer in that really cold weather so we had the heating on obviously because it was so cold we had it up to 20 to 23 degrees celsius until joy realized that the efficiency had actually you know, decreased dramatically uh, as the temperature dropped so we dropped the heating down to 19 20 degrees and that made a bit of a difference it went to 350 400 uh, but I must admit, uh, you know, I was getting some range anxiety towards the end of that trip because it was dropping down to below 20%, um, having started from about 90%, having supercharged in Denver. So just keep that in mind, guys, as you're calculating your trip and your range, that certainly with the heating up in cold weather, climbing to altitude, yeah, that's going to affect your, uh, your range, certainly. But we got there, no issues of course, and I certainly am not one to drive with such a low uh, state of charge usually. Uh, I like to keep it above 50 as much as I can, but uh, that's certainly something to keep in mind for next time. The second tip I want to share with you is, this is something I didn't realize when I was booking my holiday. Because I thought the Model X had such a good range, 350 kilometers, and the supercharger from my hotel was only 10 minutes away, I actually didn't factor in that I would need overnight charging because I thought, you know, I would probably just drive to town, you know, every couple of days to have dinner or whatever and then just top up with a supercharger if needed because town was only 10 minutes away from the resort. Yeah, I learned that with sentry mode on and with temperatures reaching minus 20 degrees at night uh, in the car park, and by the way, some days I parked outside because basement car park was was scarce at this place I lost probably 8 to 10 percent of battery capacity every night from sentry mode and just from phantom drain with the cold weather so you know 10 percent is nothing to sneeze at particularly if you arrive at a hotel say with about 30 40 percent or even less and that's certainly something I will take into account for next time in cold weather I'm gonna book a hotel where I have knowledge that there is a there's a charger on site luckily at this basement car park on the quiet days there was a standard wall point where I could plug the mobile charger into and that would actually help keep the state of charge and also top up a little bit as well so that was quite handy to have but uh, on busy days you know the car didn't have the opportunity to charge even with a trickle charge overnight so that's something else to keep in mind as well. Make sure you either have a power point to use or a, a uh, designated um, car charger in your hotel. The third thing I learned and the tip I want to share with you is that supercharging is a whole different kettle of fish in cold weather. So 
I can see why now, uh, with a recent update about a year ago now, Tesla was proud to announce that with with um, with their cars that had battery pre-warming or, or conditioning before you arrive at a supercharger. And living in Sydney, where our weather is generally pretty good most of the year, I didn't really think too much of it. I thought, well, you know, that's great. I mean, the battery is pretty quick to charge anyway when you arrive at a supercharger. But now having experienced uh, minus 20 degrees, I realized how important that is for uh, places where it gets really cold because when you arrive at a supercharger, when it's not conditioned, uh, it takes about 10 to 15 minutes for the battery to warm up. And being an Australian at the supercharger, sitting in minus 20 degrees, thinking, this is not working. The, the battery's not charging. I've been plugged in for the last five to 10 minutes and I'm getting worried because the state of charge is running low. And not until I Googled it, I realized, okay, it does take a little while to warm up. So yeah, that was a little bit, a uh, bit of anxiety for me as well, realizing I could be stuck here with the battery not working. I was ready to call Tesla, but luckily, you know, as the internet does, it provided some answers and we waited a bit longer and it started to charge. Then it would slowly rise, like we're talking very slowly, like four or five kilowatts. And I think it only reached maybe 30 to 40, maybe 50 kilowatts uh, in half an hour. So it was very slow uh, in that cold weather. And also I realized that turning the heating up when you're supercharging actually helps as well. So heating the cabin up, um, and, and forums do confirm this as well, that heating the back cabin can heat the battery up at the same time. Uh, and that's when it's appropriate to use heating. I realized actually too that I think Tesla's gonna start charging for non-battery charging use at a supercharger. So keep that in mind too. But I think it's potentially life-saving if you have the heating on. So yeah, don't worry too much. Just pay for it if you need to. Oh, and I should also say too that when it's really cold, uh, sometimes the plugs, like the supercharging plugs, actually, um, I don't know if they're frozen, but they certainly don't work anymore. Um, there was one, one or two plugs at, at that supercharger station when it was actually frozen. Uh, and I couldn't actually plug it into the car. And, um, and when I arrived a couple of times, there would be one or two stalls where the plugs is hanging hanging off the hook and just on the ground in the snow. And um, whether the last owner was was um, not conscientious enough to plug it back or whether it just fell off because it was so cold, I don't know, but it was certainly stuck in the snow and uh, basically unusable while it thaws. So yeah, keep that in mind that um, you know, just if you're, if you're charging the snow, make sure it's hooked on properly and also be mindful that some of them may not work because it's just too, too cold. So yeah, guys, that, they're my tips for um, for driving a Tesla in cold weather. Uh, something that we Australians certainly don't experience that much of. I mean, it, we do have snow here in Australia, but I don't think it gets to that cold, to minus 20 degrees. So yeah, guys, hopefully um, you take away from this. And if you're thinking about driving in cold weather uh, in an electric car, or at least a Tesla, then you'll know these are the these are the challenges you face that we certainly wouldn't ordinarily do so in in Sydney anyway, or in Australia, mostly. All right, guys, well, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed that video. Don't forget to leave a comment. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, happy charging.